The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 776 Scheming Never Ends Right now, Lin said, starting to pace, the Empire is at its lowest things population in three centuries, and that's counting all of Giovanni Goldfeather's surviving daughters. The Empire has twelve provinces, but four of them were demoted from provincial status by a ruling of the Council of Lords 137 years ago and turned into lordless vassal states managed by small councils of griffins and ponies who answered to the Empire as a whole. Grandas, Gleam, Falana, and Barrows were so marginalized within the Empire that many ignore them or pretend they're not a part of it. But that's because of the holy weight the citizens place on Sphinxes, thanks to Garshiva. She turned, walking back across the room. Now, that balance of power is shifting again. Granville has been without an empress for years, and everyone is discovering his Valdi has been too. Jaya's lord is freshly murdered, and Stormhoff and Everlast nearly had their families wiped out as well, thanks to someone's stupid plans. Wildewind, Goldoa, and Goldfeather are the only three provinces that haven't been shaken lately, and of them, Goldfeather are the only ones we can count on as a bastion of imperial unity. Gazelle slumped in his wheelchair, tail flicking. There was a reason I never went after Goldfeather. Their lord has a reputation to rid his province of, and is generally a fine fellow, more or less. He knows how to solve his own problems. This could turn around partly, Ling continued. I will be of age to become empress in the coming years. My brother is taking over his Valdi and may be turning a new leaf. All of the surviving houses do have adult children, thanks again to Giovanni Coldfeather. And we could probably wrangle that foal in my wily ex adjutant's belly into becoming the new Lord Jaya, if it's a he, Gazelle mused. It's actually a Stormhof, but I made enough of a fuss. But that's a big if and still far in the future. Lynn nodded. Houses are usually replenished by the Empress's cults. She glanced down at herself. But I won't even be having children for many years still. In short, the role of sphinxes in the Empire is vulnerable. There have been times this happened in the past. History books note Garshiva blessing us with numbers after every period of waning, but they don't say how. Her influence has always kept us in power. But if we are on the decline at the same time as she is weakened, and now this power crisis... Valet furrowed her brow, speaking for the first time since Lynn began. So sphinxes could be driven completely out of business? I mean, not to be a jerk, but you guys haven't exactly done the best job running the place. I like you, but isn't it a little egotistical to call this a tragedy? Lynn shook her head. It's not us we're worried about. Kashiva is a goddess. I have seen her face to face many times in the last month, and her power is returning, not waning. She may not have the size and presence to reveal herself to the entire world anymore, as the saying goes, but I fear for what she could accomplish in retribution if the continent turned it back on her. Are you familiar with the Single Day Crusade, the war where Garshiva decimated Jar's armies after they disobeyed her commandments and invaded Mistvale? Garshiva lets us rule the Empire however we please. But there are limits. That and the Church of Yakyakistan has been getting thirsty, Gazelle added. They've been making private overtures to us ever since that business in Ironridge. Whatever they're hoping to accomplish, they've been smelling blood for a while now. Lynn nodded sadly. Our regional rivals in this northern half of the world, she looked up at the grey sky. The sun still far enough overhead to illuminate for the clouds down into the city. This has been no laughing matter for a long time. And I only recently sunk my mind into that, Gazelle apologized. Valet raised an eyebrow. So let me get this straight, Prince Dude. Did me and Starlight actually get through to you with that clobbering? Like, I was trying to, but you really dance. Gazelle curled his lip. I'm painfully aware, and yes, I'm more lucid than I have been. Don't let your expectations run away from you, though. You know how dangerous I can be. Cool! Valet stared at him evilly. 
I also heard a thing about you laughing at the lords about manipulating me at Stormhoof. Gazelle sighed in exasperation. Don't tell me you don't appreciate it. I could have pinned all that on you in a gambit to stave off my own reputation's demise, and I didn't. I expect a mouth-written letter of thanks and a kiss on the back of my paw, and we'll call it even. Valet stared at him. What? Can't even take a favor these days, Gazelle growled, shaking his head. I bail you out! You, Meltdown, Felicity, and all the sisters! Don't make me be more direct. Apologies taste terrible. I hate being wrong. You're welcome, and since you're in cahoots with little in here, the best way to thank me is staying that way. I might be far from trustworthy, but she's our Empire's only hope. You could at least thank him, Lynn murmured. You got through to him about how badly he was breaking his promise to me. He was always trying his hardest, but it's in a better direction now. Ah, the full of her ears. No strings attached. Bananas, if so. Thanks. I just told you, Gazelle sighed, the strings are that you help my sister. Competent help might be just what we need. Vale glanced at the filly. Oh, really? You got something in mind you want me to do about this? She swept a hoof at the darkened room in the city beyond, countless smokes glowing along the walls where unicorns used horn light, bathing the pit in a dim, colorful glow. No offense, but... What? Milton promises Gazelle the problem is real, Lynn whispered. But she won't tell him what it is. Valet held her head and thought. And how trustworthy is she? Just saying, if there's a chance the power crisis could perch sphinxes from a 40 around here, she's both pretty high up on the food chain and not a sphinx. What if you guys got run out by an angry mob, and then she brought the power back and claimed she fixed something you had been blocking from her? Save her own image? Pray off yours? Lin shook her head. Not possible. Even if Gashiva left peacefully, the Empire's power comes from her. There would be no power for Meltdown to turn back on if Gashiva wasn't here. But I think it's more likely Gashiva would hold a position by force. There could be a lot of casualties, and Meltdown isn't a hateful pony. The only creatures I've ever seen a despise were heretics. Valet bitter lip. I hate to tell you guys this and have no idea if I'm spilling a titanic imperial secret, but, um... She glanced at the two guards who were stoically standing watch. Those guys are trustworthy? Absolutely, Lynn promised. They are our highest ranks and have taken many binding oaths. Valet hesitated, then took a breath. Your power doesn't come from Gashiva. That big crystal thing in her temple? We call it a crystal palace. There's one in Ironwich, too, and we think Yak Yakistan has one, and then there are a bunch more in Equestria. He's got this tree sign with a magic flame that's incredibly powerful and is linked to stuff I never really paid attention to about the Yak's Harmony stuff. Our airship has a generator that uses that stuff for power. And I'm 100% sure Gashiva's got some magic something down in there that's using that flame for energy. Her leaving probably wouldn't change your power situation a bit. Gazelle and Lynn stared at each other with a look that didn't fill the lay with confidence. Even their guards looked disturbed. Meltdown and I... Gazelle cleared his throat. Uh, close, if you know what I mean. She trusts me with her greatest weaknesses. As conniving as we are, she wouldn't do that to me. Okay, so you're friends, Vili nodded. Maybe she just hide you away from whatever uprising you're causing. And maybe you were insane and didn't realize you were wrecking the Empire's political stability, but if she was planning this stuff with you, she must have seen it. I'd say you've got your villain nice and easy. Lynn frowned uncomfortably, sitting and fidgeting. Would Gashiva really allow her to do that? It's her temple. She would have to know. Oh, most likely, Gazelle waved a bandaged paw. Gashiva has been a confidant throughout that whole swashbuckling crusade. If we were approaching a line, she would let us know. 
She gives us remarkable leeway to do with the continent as we choose, yet she is very insistent about things that are sometimes inconsequential. Like a heresy for building power generators? Who cares? Unless she's up to something too. The mind of a goddess is a complete mystery. Valet's pupil, Frank. Bananas! I have no idea if there's something you want me to extrapolate from all that, but it could go in all sorts of uncomfortable directions. Seriously, though, you said you wanted my help? What exactly do you expect me to do? Fight past all the guards? Break into the temple score? Figure out what's going on and kick some bad guy butt? She blanched, then narrowed her eyes. I mean, I'm flattered, but I'm really not feeling up to that. Especially not after you just made me clean up Stormhoof. Getting on the bad side of a goddess doesn't sound like my idea of a good time. Well, Lynn said, weighing her words carefully, there's a chance you wouldn't have to break in. End of chapter 776